Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask. Well, I tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Lana Makara. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live or at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with my like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Faye, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny and their reason for being here. Um, I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, hypnosis, meditation, angel cards, to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason and destiny. Um, now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guide to meditation or angel card, with the, re with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Lana Makara, who will be talking about how to end self-sabotage and prepare for success. Now, Lana is the host of Now It's My Turn, where the 50-plus woman awakens her spark and enjoys her life on the Awake TV network. She's a spiritual advisor and intuitive healer. Lana also works with clients to roll back the clock on how they feel in mind, body and spirit. She's an award-winning, best-selling author and ghostwriter of more than 30 books, with a million books sold. A vivacious speaker, she has appeared on hundreds of stages across the globe, as well as hosting shows in both radio and TV. Her upcoming book, Enough, is hopefully being released this year, 2020. So without further delay, hello, Lana, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate being with you today. Oh, that, that's brilliant. And for those that are watching, in case you hadn't guessed, yes, I have got the dreaded cold that's been going about in the United Kingdom. So if my voice goes today, Lana will be taking over the whole show. So I'll just keep warning you, Lana. <laughs> and now you spring it on me. <laughs> Sorry, just came in like that. Um, before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Lana and I want to be part of this uh, conversation. So please don't be shy. And uh, we'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello live or at a later date or once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can get updates on all recordings. So Lana, why don't you tell us more about yourself and how to end self-sabotage and prepare for success and make better choices? Oh, what a question. <laughs> self-sabotage is something we're all really good at, it seems like. Uh, I mean, I talk to people who are trying to manifest something and they're having problems and uh, other people who started off, you know, seeming like they were going on one direction, they end up where they didn't want to be. Um, it just seems to be part of the human condition that we don't realize when we are really uh, diverting ourselves from getting what we want. And so self-sabotage is when we, we have a goal in mind and we think we're heading for it, but something happens and it doesn't end out well. It, it doesn't end out like we wanted. Um, and this, uh, the reason I came into this uh, line of thinking is because my own life. And most of the time when I talk, I talk about what happened to me because that kind of matches, you know, to what other people are experiencing. I came from a very troubled growing up and my, my family was uh, very abusive. I had a lot of trauma from my growing up days. And so I thought the thing to do <coughs> was be, uh, to go to college and find a really good man and marry him. That was my plan. And so I, I did, I worked my way through college. I found a man who was perfect. He looked perfect. He was up on stage. He was traveling around the country singing in these groups. And, and he was the star of the, of the acting, you know, when they put on plays at the college and, and respected by everyone. And his family was amazing. His mother was wonderful. Um, and to me, they were like the cleavers, you know, back in the day, they were perfect in every way. Um, and so, yeah, I married him and uh, spent 30 years of my life uh, living with a narcissist who totally didn't even see me, discounted me in every way imaginable until, you know, it was like I didn't even have a, a presence, a voice. It was just, I disappeared. 
I, I was gone. Um, and so what I thought was creating this perfect life for myself was actually creating a prison where I felt locked in. I had no control of my life anymore. Everything was done for me and it wasn't to my advantage. It was to my disadvantage. Um, and I self-sabotaged myself majorly in that space. But you know, as a 21 year old girl, what did I know? Yeah. You know, I, I was doing the best I could, um, trying to make my life better, but I was looking through a distortion. I wasn't looking clearly at what was happening. So what I call that when we have trauma in our life, we have trauma and we're trying to make decisions based on that, you know, trying to get away from something, or maybe we think I want to be successful. So I won't have to worry about money anymore because now I worry all the time. Um, that's actually a distortion and that is coming from a trauma of lack. And when we have those kind of things, uh, we're looking through a cracked mirror. I, I call that a cracked mirror. Because when you look in a cracked mirror, you look at it, but then it, it just goes off like this. It, it's not a real image. You, your face is twisted in and it's not right. And so um, what happens in those trauma states is we don't see ourselves clearly. We have a distorted image of who am I? And our identity gets, gets cracked and shifted and it's not, it's not accurate. It's not real. Um, and we make choices from that place. And as long as we're in that place with unhealed traumas, then the choices that we make, if they land right, that is like, you know, a miracle. Because most of the time, probably 99% of the time, it's not going to end well. Because although we're trying our best to make that good choice, our, our image is distorted. And we're trying to do something that we don't even know. We can't even tell. Um, what is real what is really happening and so the answer to that is to heal those those traumas heal those places get clear get a clear image of your identity and who you are and what you want yeah yeah so so how difficult is it to um uh get a clear image of yourself if, if you're so used to seeing yourself in that cracked mirror how do you kind of repair that mirror or get a new mirror you can um, you can just move away the old mirror and a new one immediately comes up, you know, in its place. It is a process. I mean, it depends on how much trauma you have. You know, if you lost your job and and that's the main thing, you can get through that probably in a, in a, a little bit of time. But if you grew up with a uh, tormented childhood for 21 years, that's going to take longer to unravel. So but but the first point, the first step is to realize that there is a problem and to begin addressing it to begin doing that work and clearing that those things up because it's almost like a knotted ball of string, isn't it? It's just, you get one knot untangled and it takes you to the next one and you unknot that one. And, and after a while that knotted ball of string falls apart mm. and you all of a sudden you're like, wow, my life is completely transformed. Um, but realizing, you know, when people would say to me, you don't make good choices, you know, you're in trouble. You got, you got this problem with your landlord. You're, you're doing this, you're doing that. And, and I'll be like, I don't, I don't know how I, how this happens. Well, instead of that, you know, victim kind of a uh, bewildered, confused way to say, you know, if this is a pattern for me, then at some point I am making choices from some trauma state. And it's not serving me. And then get a practitioner and help, you know, to help you unravel, unravel that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think that's kind of like one of the hardest things um, that, that we do is it's recognizing those patterns. I mean, our lives, because it quite often takes something traumatic for us to suddenly stop and go, Whoa, okay. There's something, going on here because otherwise we just normally just keep going along going along going along even if people are telling us you know there's there's something wrong we kind of like have this inner thing don't we that oh no it must all be right it can't be what they're what they're saying i must be right yes yes because um i had this happen too in dating because in the 10 years i've been single you know i realized i was in a pattern i was dating the same guy again and again just a different face um because my relationship you know, trauma that I had was unhealed. And I was looking at that uh, oddly. But one of the things that, <laughs> that really is um, 
very helpful is to realize there's nothing wrong with you. You're not a bad person. You're not, you're not, you know, like dumb or, or having a problem in your smart area. This it's nothing like that. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just, you have this thing, this trauma state somewhere in your body. It's affecting your mind and just find it, just find it and get it out and, and you'll be fine. And that's liberating there. Yeah. And it sounds yeah. so easy and um, and straightforward to do it. And I think most things normally are, but we just make them seem a lot more complicated um, than, than, than they actually are. Oh, absolutely. I resisted getting help for a while because I had so much pain in my childhood that I was afraid of opening, you know, like opening Pandora's box and and I was afraid it would overwhelm me. And what I found out was, no, it doesn't. It's just, you can, you deal with what you can in the moment. And then next time you get a little bit more, but that was before I really uh, learned because I am a clinical hypnotherapist and I do a lot of work with brain science hmm. um, as well as energy healing. So I, I took brain science and energy work and, and matched them together. And wow, it is amazing what you can do. And you don't even have to remember the event. It's yeah. just like plucking out an eyebrow, <laughs> just bing, and it's gone, and and you're gone. And and I'm going to do a demo in a little bit to mm. show uh, one of these games that really does work a lot of uh, clearing and healing, and not traumatic at all. That's the wonderful thing about brain science. Yes. Yeah, we we like things that are on their own traumatic. And we've got Christy watching, who said hello. Hi, Christy. Hi, Christy. <laughs> And obviously, you two know each other from the uh, network TV. Yeah. yeah. And, and that. So, so that sounds quite fascinating. You know, mixing the um, brain science and the sort of like healing. So how would you do that? <laughs> well, they're, 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 if you think about it, they're both at the different ends of the spectrum, really. They, they are, but um, really, as we are learning more and more about the energy work and learning more and more about the science, they're really not that far apart. A lot of the clearing that we do with Reiki and other um, healing methods, which is where I started, you know, I started with the Reiki and all that, um, is actually scientifically proven now that we do have these energy bodies in our physical being. Uh, it's been proven with uh, thermography and other kind of uh, these really high tech instruments that can look at the body and see auras now and things like that, um, that really this is true. It is not woo woo. It's science. And so while we do have the divine connection and the intuitive connection and the ability, and I have the ability to see energy and to feel where my clients are, um, it is not as woo woo as we think because science is catching up to where we've been for many years and proving that what we're doing is real. I yes. love that. Yeah. I, I, I love that as well. That science is catching up to us. Yes. <laughs> and that, you know, we're, we're, we're way advanced um, compared to scientists. It's like, yeah, come on scientists, step up your game, get with us. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So what science has shown, it's called holographic memory resolution. If you want to look it up on Google, holographic memory resolution. Uh, it's only been around for three years, I think. And so what they have proven is that when we have a traumatic memory, an event that affected us, uh, and trauma means it's too big, you can't process it right now. It's overwhelming to you. So what the brain does in the body is, is it takes that memory and stores it in the body. Boom. And so let's say you were in a car accident when you were eight and you got hurt and that was very traumatic for you. And so because of the trauma, you stored that memory of that accident. Let's say you put it here. Well, then later on, you started having trouble with your shoulder, it started hurting and it started having all kinds of problems. And then you hurt it again. And, and, and it ended up that at age 50, now you've got arthritis and now other things are happening. And what it is, is this shoulder holds some toxic memory. 
And using these brain games, you can actually pull that energy out and throw it away, dissolve it, get rid of it in one way or another. So there's a lot of different things we do with them. And immediately the person feels emotional relief. Their, their physical body will feel relief. And this can actually take away long-term pain, depending on the source of the pain. Um, it's amazing what happens. And it, it is totally scientific. Absolutely scientific. It feels like magic. Because in just three minutes, you might be able to take something out that's been bothering you for 20 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. It, 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 seems, it seems like magic. But I like the fact there's science behind it. Um, because I, I do like to, uh, to to look at the sides behind um, things as well. It's part of my analytical brain. It's like, oh, how does this work? Let's go and piece it together, take bits, bits yeah. and pieces out. Um, so I'm definitely going to look up um, that holistic, um, hol sorry, holographic um, thing just just so I can, just so I can read up on that one and see what and see what that's yeah. about <laughs> and and that. So what other ways can we um, self-sabotage um, in, in, you know, in our lives? When we think we want one thing and we actually want something else. Uh, when we think if I could win the lottery, my life would be transformed and I, everything in my life would straighten out right away. It would be done. When actually what we want is peace, quiet, good relationships, calm. And the only place to get that is inside. It's not in winning the lottery, but we attach these things that we want to something that's out there instead of realizing that it's, it's right here and it's accessible to you and you're in control of it. Um, and so that going after like chasing rabbits, you know, chasing bunnies instead of uh, really looking inside and, and seeing where, <coughs> you know, where the answer truly is. Yes. That's, that's definitely a form of self-sabotage. Yeah. Okay. So does it always show the same way in everybody or do people show, um, do self-sabotage in different ways? And, you know, does it look the same? Does it not look the same? I think it's pretty individual, but there are patterns, you know, there may be, say six or eight different patterns of self-sabotage and the individual might, you know, follow different ones or combinations of different ones. Um, one of them is um, chasing success, you know, like working so hard and neglecting family and, and, put, you know, taking your health down and, and that kind of thing in, in chasing this thing that you think is going to be the answer for you. And it, and it isn't. Um, that to me, when you ignore your body in favor of something out there and your body ends up suffering for it, that is huge, huge self-sabotage because this body, if it's not healthy, if it's not feeling relaxed and calm, then nothing else is going to be, nothing else is going to be right because this is really the most important thing. And yet it, it seems like we put it at the back of the line, you know? Um, so that is another, uh, another thing that trauma does. Trauma makes us look out there for an answer because we don't want to look in here. Yeah. It, it might be painful if we look in here. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of different things that, that happen with this, uh, with this self-sabotage. The, the thing to find out and the really the two questions that we need to ask if we're in the space and that is number one, who am I really? Am I a victim or am I this beautiful light filled soul that wants to give so much to the world? Am I someone who has <laughs> influence and can help people? Is it someone who solves problems and, and brings solutions, you know, to the world? Or am I a victim? Am I uh, uh, somebody that is suffering and constantly on a, on a path and a trail to more and more problems and downtrodden and, and, and broke, you know, no money? Um, who am I? Who am I? Am I that person in this trauma state, in this downtrodden state? Is that really me? And if you ask the question honestly, 
something in your in your mind and your subconscious somewhere it will come up and say you know that isn't really me the person inside me there's light in here there's love there's there's joy there's all this this contribution that i want to do um that's who i really am and so then it's simply a matter of letting the real you come out and play by just taking off all that false identity just just let it go just let it go yeah. not even you yeah yeah that sounds really good so when did you realize that you were doing that you were self-sabotaging yourself well the first one was when i left my 30-year marriage um even i never really thought of leaving him uh i thought of leaving him one time during that 30-year period then i talked myself out of it uh, because I had seven children and I couldn't see myself as a single mom of seven children. Um, but it wasn't my plan. I never had a plan, you know, like, okay, in, uh, in 18 months, I'm going to have enough money and I'm going <laughs> to, no, it wasn't like that. Um, but when things got so bad and there was a crisis and I had to come to grips, uh, and a friend gave me some advice out of the blue, it was amazing. Um, that really landed with me and it woke me up like I was in a trance. I was in a survival trance. And when it, all that went down and I ended up in a little ramshackle trailer in the woods in South Carolina by myself alone, I had to do some self-assessment like what happened? You know, how did I do that? How did I create this situation where I'm so down and alone and no money? I left my 30 year marriage with $200 in my pocket and no, no resume for 20 for 30 years, mm. no resume for 30 years. I had $200 and I spent most of that getting driving, you know, the 12 hours I had to drive. So yeah, uh, that was the first clue, you know, that I had. But then when I got into personal development and I started on this road and I was doing everything I was doing, you know, I did emotion code. I did tapping. I did Reiki. I did uh, Hona Pona Pono. I did you name it. I mean, I was on YouTube, you know, like a mad woman <laughs> trying to find out what else. <laughs> yep, I love YouTube for that. <laughs> and um, a couple of years after uh, all this happened, I did get a life coach <laughs> and I worked with a life coach for two years. Um, but as I was going through that period of time, I started to see patterns in myself and it had nothing to do with what happened back there. It was how I was still behaving, still making those choices. And um, so when I started seeing patterns that were not in my favor, you know, the, the third guy I dated who turned out to be a real, real crumb, um, you know, that was on me. I just didn't know how I was doing it. I didn't know how I was attracting those people and, and actually being attracted to them. You know, that was another thing. Um, yeah. You know, the third job that where I got a uh, bad deal, you know, uh, they used a lot of my skills and didn't want to pay me. And so, you know, once that happened a few times, I'm like, wait a minute, I must be going in there to apply with a sign saying, <laughs> Take advantage of me. I'm easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> something was going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The energy you were, you were, you were sending out. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So that's how I got clued into it. And eventually um, with, with working with my life coach, especially, and then taking this training, you know, for this holographic memory mm -hmm. resolution and, uh, and hypnosis and so forth, I started to see, that it wasn't as hard to clear these things as I had first thought it would be. Mm. It, it was actually very easy. It was very easy to do. Um, and over a period of about a year, you know, my life completely changed, totally transformed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's probably about a good time um, for you to give us a little demonstration of how we can okay. do something. I like okay. these. <laughs> I love these. These are so fun. Um, I call these uh, brain games because it looks like you're just doing something really silly, but the results are really amazing. Okay, so the first thing to do is to just focus in and let your let your mind tell you the first thing that you want to work on. 
So as you're sitting there in your chair, relaxing, and you just think of the first thing. Now, if we're talking about self-sabotage, maybe you could, you know, think of uh, why am I self-sabotaging uh, my romantic relationships? Something like that, whatever comes up. And so I'm going to, I'm going to take that one just because it, it's on my mind right now. Okay. So for me, <clears throat> I'm saying, why am I self-sabotaging my romantic relationships, which I'm not even in one, so it doesn't <laughs> apply, yeah. but anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> and now answer some questions. Now, the way we answer the questions is the subconscious mind speaks very softly and immediately. It whispers. The conscious mind comes behind it and goes, oh, I don't know if that's right. Don't pay attention to that one. Just take the first answer, the quiet answer. That's the right answer. Don't second guess. How old were you the first time you had the idea that this was the way you should behave. The first number that comes to your mind is the right answer. So let's say I was six. How old were you? Were you inside or outside when this event happened? Inside or outside, you don't necessarily have to remember the event. Just let it come up. Were you inside or outside? Take that. Were you with people? or alone with people or alone. So what this is doing is just giving the mind something to hold on to. Even if you don't remember the event, if you do, that's fine. Or you might not, it doesn't matter. And now the next question, where did I store that memory in my body? And just let your hand go to that place. Even if you don't consciously think of a place, let your hand go to that place. And what I usually do is I take my shoulder because it's on the video. Okay. So now what we're going to do when you touch that place, what color is that energy? The first color that comes to your mind is the right color. And so now the next step is we're going to pull that energy <coughs> out. We're going to pull it out and we're going to put it in our hand. Now it's going to take a little bit. You're going to have to pull a few times to get it all. And sometimes it'll, it'll move. It'll like migrate. And so just pull until you have a sense that you have it all, put it in your hand and you're building up like a pile of energy. Now this color and mine is blue. So I've got this ball of blue energy now in my hands and make sure you get it all. Just check in, make sure you get it all. Because if you, if you get it all, you'll get a sense like, okay, I got it all. Now, as you're holding this in your hand, this, this energy, this colored energy, is it hot or cold? Is it rough or smooth? Is it heavy or light? And as your brain answers these questions, it gets a better grip on this, this particular ball of energy. That's all we're doing. We're just giving the brain something to imagine. All right, now I want you to take that ball of energy by both sides, I want you to stretch it out into a big screen TV. So you're gonna stretch it out this way, you're gonna stretch it high and low, wide and up and down, make a big screen TV. And now you're gonna put a black frame around it. Put a black frame around it, encapsulate it so it's all inside. And as you stretch it like this, the color just kind of spreads and it changes into a video. So you see color and movement. Don't see the, you don't actually see a movie, but you just see color and movement inside the screen. Now on the bottom of the screen, there's this knob. And when you turn that knob, it's going to blank out the movie. It's either going to go white or black. It doesn't matter. Just turn and turn and turn. And just imagine that it's blanking. Blank it out till it's completely gone. Just keep turning, turning, turning. This may take a little bit. Just turn until it's blank, completely blank. That's right. And once it's completely blank, you're going to take your finger and you're going to write inside the frame. You're going to write in the frame any lessons that you learned. Because sometimes we want to keep these things because we think I learned a lesson. 
Well, we're going to write the lesson down right now. And the great thing is you don't really have to know what you're writing. Your mind knows what you're writing. So you just write, 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 write until you're done, until you get them all. And sometimes I get a little, um, I get impatient. And I write with all five fingers at one time. My brain can handle it. It can handle it. Yeah, just write it, write it, get it all out there, get it all out there. And sometimes I get vehement. I'm like, if it was bad, I'm like, yeah, I learned that. And I learned that. Just keep writing until you're all done. <laughs> write and write and write and write and write. Okay. And when you get it all done, you get this sense like, okay, I wrote it all down. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take your frame. You're going to squeeze it in to the size of a DVD. Top and bottom, squeeze it in to the size of a DVD. All right, now you've got it in your hands and there are two hands right here. Now take a deep breath. <sighs> Raise your hands up over your head. Now, if you're right in front of a wall, be careful, don't hurt yourself, but I want you to throw it against the back wall as hard as you can. Bam! Now take your two nail guns and nail it to the wall. Bam, 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 bam! <laughs> like that. <laughs> All right, take a deep breath. Notice the change in your body. Notice the change in your mind. Now do a check on that spot and see. See if it's all gone. See if you can recreate it and notice what happens instead. Notice what happens instead. Yeah, it's gone. All right. Sometimes you might feel a rising of heat. <coughs> That's just uh, your body's just readjusting if you feel heat. Mm. And sometimes you might feel like a rush of some emotion, maybe even not know what that emotion is and just breathe. Just let your body process out whatever that was. It can only last a few seconds. Emotions can only last a maximum of 90 seconds. And this probably wouldn't even last that long. Mm. So just breathe through it. Okay, so what did you feel? And that was that was the um, that, that was pretty cool. Um, it was in my throat and it was blue, so same as same as your color, it was blue. And then mm -hmm. I just wrote one word: speak. That's all I needed to write. Okay. Um, yeah, and then when I went back into my throat, um, yeah, it, it was smooth. Awesome, awesome, and, uh, awesome. So, <laughs> so yeah, but but it's like you. I was thinking, okay. Well, one of my self sabotaging so i went with your relationship one because i'm not in a relationship so i thought i'll go with that one um so there, there you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes that one there you can use over and over and over again you can use it for pain you can use it for upset or a lot of different things you can use it many 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 ways um i have about 30 different processes similar to that for different reasons yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I like the I like the way you know when you said at the beginning, you know, it's a really quick, simple, easy thing to do, and it is really quick, simple, and easy, yes. e easy to do. It's it's not a complicated thing as we try and make things be complicated um, in the future. Yes, exactly. Uh, the answers, the solutions, the real, true solutions are much simpler than we imagine. We like to overcomplicate a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. So as you know, so um, Lana very kindly did that for us. Um, so as you know, I normally do guided meditations, angel card reading. So each week I like to ask my guests whether they would like a mini guided meditation or an angel card for yourself and those watching. So Lana, what would you like? Angel card reading. Thank you. <laughs> and of course that helps my voice as well, which is, which is pretty cool. So, so that's the um, that was been not that I coached you on that one at all in any way. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see as usual. So just cleanse and bless the cards. And as you know, um, when I read cards, um, the cards when I read them is for what we need to know in our present. Because um, even though I work with healing the past, I do that so that we can be fully present. And although I work with taking people into the future, it's so they can see their future, so they can actually be in the present. So I very much like working in the present. Mm. So what does Lana and everyone who's watching this 
lie bothering for a need to know for their highest good what does Lana and everyone who's watching this live or replay need to know for their highest good? And that one seems to want to come out, I think. And we've got a beautiful card. Joy and delight. Open your heart to joy. Wow. <laughs> and uh, oh, let's turn that around that way. And a beautiful little fairy there. Mm, beautiful. And, and that. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's basically saying, and it kind of like fits in with what we've been talking about um, as, as well, is, you know, now is the time. You know, we are in the period now where it is time to open our hearts to joy, let the light in, let the fairy magic, the childlike things come in and just enjoy um, what we're doing. So take time to spend a little more joyful time going back into that child um thing for you so uh yeah so that was a be that was a beautiful card thing so i hope that makes sense that makes total sense yes because one of my main my main works for myself is letting my inner child play ah yeah so, so yeah the angels are confirming around that that's that's what you should be doing <laughs> so lana do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers um one of the things that I found, because I my show is about 50 plus women finding their spark, enjoying their life, um, is that when you go through this process of releasing, you feel younger, you look younger, you act younger. And a lot of times uh, what we see as symptoms of aging could be simply a, a combination and a building up of things that we haven't released, old pain, old traumas, and those perspectives and just get heavier and heavier and heavier. And isn't it interesting that people that are very old, they look bent over like mm. they're carrying a weight on their back when actually, you know, they might be if they haven't learned how to do this work and make those release those things. And so um, I think my, my main mission is to change the way people look at aging as just simply another part of life and not necessarily a, a, a definite <laughs> sentence that, you know, it's almost like a life sentence of decline. You know, you're gonna feel bad at 70, you're gonna feel worse at 80 and worse at 90. No, no, that's not, that's not a, a way to think about it. It's, there's a much better way uh, to think about, you know, growing older by contribution, wisdom, and uh, making a huge impact on the world in this time when we have all this to share that we've learned, you know, from our life experience. So that's, that's really where I'm, that's my heart. Yeah. And, and it makes, and it makes absolute, um, absolute sense. Um, and that obviously, you know, with, with what you're saying earlier about trauma and it affects different parts of your body. Yeah. I can quite easily see how it can, can age you, make you older than you actually, than, than you, than you actually are. So, yes. I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this and found it insightful and the words of wisdom Lana have given you will help you further on your journey. So Lana, if people want to get in touch with you and connect with you, how do they do that? Well, instant message me on Facebook. That's the first thing. Um, and join our Facebook group. It's now it's my turn .com. And if you just do a search on Facebook, now it's my turn exclamation point. Uh, and come on over because I'm there every day. You know, if you want to interact with me, that's a great place to do it. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Excellent. And I'll put the um, I'll put those links um, into into the comments, so people just need to click on it and automatically um, get get over to it. So thank you, everyone, so much for watching, um, and thank you, Lana, for um, agreeing to be on my show. Thank you. And all those watching, I'd like you to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Please um, reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call where we can chat about how I can help you and what you need um, to move forward with your life to get clear on your destiny. And I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday at 8 p.m. So again, thank you everyone so much for watching. Um, and thank you, Lana, again, for being on my show. It's brilliant. So thank you very much. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.
Bye.